Hey guys, how you doing? It's Andy Elliott. Listen, I'm gonna to talk today about something a little bit different, okay? And this may be for GMs, this may be for management, or this may be for the salesmen right now that are selling, that wanna work their way up to becoming a general manager. Guys, I'm gonna tell you this right now. You know the best GMs I've ever seen in my life, I mean ever, were the ones that put their salesmen first, okay? So a lot of the times, you're sitting there on the bottom line right now, right? And guess what you're doing? You're grinding it. You're pushing everything you got. Guys, what we give for the people we work for is so much. The way that we should be thought of by those men that employ us, it should be unbelievable. Like a father to a son, right? You ever watch the Navy SEALs, guys? Navy SEALs is real simple, right? Who's the first person to put their foot on the ground when they get out of a helicopter to go into the mission. The leader. The leader is. He's the first one out. And then guess what? They do their job. They do their work. Who's the last one to get on the helicopter? The leader. Last one off the ground. First one on the ground. Guys, that's how leaders lead. So being a general manager, if you're holding a title or a position right now, and you're not handling business that way, you need to check yourself from the neck up. Because I'll tell you this, okay? Great salesmen that are training on every end of the world right now, they'll love to work for you. But not if they're not valued or appreciated, okay? Guys give their time away from family all the time, okay? Work is like our first home sometimes because we spend so much there as we want to be successful. But I'll tell you this, okay? Everything that we learn, it's to grow you. So if you want to be the GM, or if you are a GM, if you're a manager, the guy that owns the salespeople, the guy that owns all the employees, the guy that loves his employees, truly, he'll be the next guy running your dealership. So if you have someone in your dealership right now that's like that, and he's a GM, you're blessed. You're very lucky. If you don't have someone like that in your store, and he's a GM, but you know someone else in your company who's like that? Guys, if you act like the GM, you talk like the GM, you walk like the GM, guys, I'm gonna tell you this, if you love like the GM, that person's gonna be the next GM, I promise you. You just watch. And can anyone ever take that job away from when they get it? No ways, not a chance. All the people work for him, 10 times harder than they would work for, for someone else. I'll tell you this, Grant, Grant Cardone put out a book that's called The 10X Rule, right? And as individuals, want to achieve and do better in life. They need to work 10 times harder. But I'm gonna tell you this, great leaders, you don't have to want to work 10 times harder and read the book. If you have a great leader, you want to work 10 times harder for that leader. I've seen it every time. Guys, I've gone into stores and I've taken a store that's selling 200 a month and I've taken it from averaging 450 cars a month for years. I did three times the business. By how? Did I have a lot of GM experience? No. Nope. You know what I did? I love the salespeople. I spent a year in there training the salespeople before I took over. I want you to understand this. I was the first person on the ground, I was the last person. If, if you're gonna have a Thanksgiving with all of your employees, who should be the first to eat? The GM or the employees? I hope it's the employees. Because I'm gonna tell you this, when I was a GM, I was the last to eat. And I'll share this with you. If you're a leader, you'll always be the last to eat. You'll make sure your men are fed first. Women are men, you'll make sure they're fed first because that's how leadership works. So I put down one simple thing here. How to become a general manager fast. If you guys follow me and stay on this real quick, okay? I'm gonna tell you how you can become the GM in your company within a year or two. Yes, within a year or two, like that. I don't care, now watch this. Even if it's not in your company, it will be in another company. You will not be ignored by what you do. That potential, someone's gonna grab a hold of you. But you gotta to listen to me. Now I'm gonna tell you this, if you're even a salesman that's in a store right now, okay? Whether you're the bottom salesman or you're the top, I don't care. You wanna be a GM in two years, you can do it. Is it gonna take a lot of training? Absolutely, right? Because there's some things you have to learn to be a GM, and I wrote these over here. You have to learn how to problem solve, okay? You've gotta learn how to manage employees, all right? You gotta learn how to understand your clients, your customers, right? You gotta know what they want, okay? And you gotta know how they want it. These are things you have to know as a GM, but I'm gonna tell you this. 
What I'm about to go through supersedes all this because there's lots of people that are GMs right now that are working in companies that aren't producing profit to the bottom line month in and month out that was more than what they had the year before or that was more than when they got hired. Guys, you know how I hire someone? So if I'm running a store, right, and I've got five managers, and I'm gonna tell you this, those five managers sell 200 cars and we're putting up, I don't know, 250 grand a month in, in, in net income. If I hire a sixth manager, is it to make the job easier on the five that I have, okay? Or is it to add to the bottom line and increase? It's to add to the bottom line and increase. So when I hire a manager and I pay him $15,000 a month, how much money would I expect for him to bring to me? Maybe two, three times that at least after what I pay him. So guess what happens? If I can hire on a sixth manager and he can take my bottom line from 250 grand a month net money, okay, or wherever you're at, and he can add $50,000 to it, was he worth hiring? Absolutely. Guys, 50,000 times uh, 12 months, that's uh, half a million dollars a year. That was a great hire. But how many times do you see managers get hired in your store and they bring nothing to the table, but yet they carry around a manager or a GM title, but they're not fit for the job? Guys, here's what happens. Someone hires somebody. So like, 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 let's say I'm a GM and I hire my buddy to be a manager for me. Now listen, he's never been in management, right? But because I hire him as a manager, he has that manager title now. He works for me for three months and he doesn't cut it. I push him back out of manager, management and he goes to the next door and says, hey, my name's so-and-so, I'm a manager. And you know what they say? We need to hire managers. So you know what happened? They hire that guy. And man, what we don't know is that we're just hiring titles. If you're looking for a GM for your company, I'm gonna tell you this right now, more than likely he's not a GM right now. He's someone that has a, a giant fire in his belly. He's someone that's running a sales team somewhere, but that doesn't care about titles. You know what he says? Call me the janitor, just pay me all the money. I know what I'm worth, okay? And he's running around with that janitor title. You know why? Because he loves taking care of people. The people that work for him, they respect him. And the men and women that work for him, guess what? He knows their wives by name. He knows their kids by name. He corrals and gathers them on the daily, okay? When I was a, when I was a GM, I prayed for, for years, every Saturday morning over all my salesmen, that God will take care of your business, you take care of our business. I prayed with them every single day, whether they believed or they didn't believe, it didn't matter. I prayed over them. I showed them love. I was the first person there in the morning when a customer pulled up. I, I, I had these meetings every day. I'm going to try to beat you to it up. I'm going to try to beat you to a customer today. Okay? Now, what GM goes out on the floor and says, hey, salesman, everybody get over here. Big Daddy's coming for you today. I'm going to try to get your customers before you can get them. And you know what happened? We had fun. We all corralled together. It wasn't GM you know, like head director, manager, or GSM, and then like second manager, third manager, fourth manager, closers, salesmen, and like this guy's way up there and he's sitting at the top managing all the guys underneath him. I'm gonna tell you this, I'm the person that wants to be on the ground. If you wanna build the best sales team in the world, guess what you're gonna have to do? You're gonna have to be on the ground. You're gonna have to eat last. Now I believe this, there's a time to sit in office and take care of strategies, business, earnings, expenses, clients, employees, and problems. I do believe in that, okay? But if you have the best sales team in the world and you're involved in your people all day long, how much of this is really a problem? Well, I'm gonna tell you this, the strategies, you're living in the business. You know, I hear so many people that are like, we gotta cut our advertising, we gotta cut this. They don't know what's going on in their stores, but they're trying to make decisions from a seat over here. No, 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 you come down on the floor and you work hard as a GM and you go shake every one of your customer's hands and you find out their needs and you show love to your salesman. At the end of the day, you don't have anyone to blame. You know exactly what's going on in your store. You know what you need to change. You know what strategies work. You know what they don't. You know what type of clientele's coming in your store. You saw how many people were there for the day. Guys, you know everything from being on the bottom line. But I'm gonna tell you this. Are you having troubles with strategies and can you make decisions if you're on the bottom floor? Yeah, yeah, you can. What about your business? You understand your business left and right. You understand, you don't just have to get on your Google review to see what's going on in your company. You know what it is right there. You're giving your own review daily on how your store's working because you're on the bottom line. Earnings. You think your earnings will be up or down with you on the floor? Up, way up. What about sales morale? You think that'll be up too? Yeah. Earnings and profit, you think that'll be up? Huge. Why? 
because you're seeing the way that your business is running. And I'm going to tell you this, GMs, they act like they own the place. They treat the owner's money as if it was their own, okay? That doesn't mean you want to spare money, right, if you need to take care of a customer. Listen, that's what business is all about. Sometimes you have to spend money to take care of people, but also it means that we don't waste money either, okay? But you can't tell what you're sparing and what was worth it or what wasn't worth it from being up there in an office somewhere telling your guys what's going on. Because I'm going to tell you this, a lot of the times you have management, right, that become placent underneath your belt and you never notice it. So what happens is right now you might be in a dealership and you're a salesman and you have some, some management that's working for you. And some of those guys, you know, when you come in, they're like, hey man, what's going on? How's your day? Oh my gosh, how was your weekend? Look, let's crush it today. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Man, I'm excited. Let's have a meeting. Let's all get in a huddle. Let's get jacked up. I'm gonna help you guys go over, you know what I mean? Like what prospects we have today that have been working. We're gonna figure out how to sell those. We're gonna go out and we're gonna find us some new clients. And then as business comes in today, we're gonna take those down. Guys, we're gonna have the best day of our life. It's gonna be awesome. Managers are either building you up or tearing you down, okay? I had a conversation the other day with a store I was training, and I, I didn't feel like their dress code was up to key, right? I mean, they were dressing okay, but it wasn't great, and I told them, I said, guys, I'm gonna tell you this. If you had $10,000 and you woke up this morning and you wanted to go invest that $10,000, and you walked out to invest that $10,000 and the first person that you ran into, right, to go talk to about investing that money with wasn't really dressed nice, would you turn around and walk back out of there? Shouldn't this person on the other end be somebody that you should be able to look up to and tell you how to spend your money? I'm going to tell you, in the first 30 seconds someone sees you, they're going to be judging you. And I talked to everybody, and I said, guys, it's time to up the dress code. It's time to up the dress code. Not because your GM says it's time to up the dress code, but because you know that it's right inside. And I'm going to tell you this. Sharp GMs carry sharp salesmen. Okay? You don't let your guys fall to the wayside when you're on the floor. Okay? Guess what happened? The next day, everybody comes in, but I told them, I said, when you go and you come to work now, dress nice, dress sharp, dress really clean, you're gonna look in the mirror and you're gonna feel great. And guess what, as you go outside to work, you're gonna have a manager walk up to you, right? And one of them's gonna say, oh my gosh, man, you look crisp, you look sharp. Let's have a great day. Gosh, you look good, man. Man, woo, you look awesome. And then you're gonna have another one that's gonna be like, hey dude, uh, why don't you get your limousine? You getting married? Dude, let me ask you this. So is that manager tearing down that salesman because he decided to change his life and have a better life? Yeah. And those managers need to get out of the business. You know why? Because if you're tearing people down, you're no good. The title that you hold is awful, okay? I can train salesmen to run GM, to run GM positions. How? Because I'm gonna tell you this. When you stop managing, okay, just for a second, now I'm not saying you stop it all month long, but when you stop managing, and you prioritize the time that you have to manage in a day to handle the things that are necessary, you spend the rest of the day by start leading. I can take a salesman that's on the floor right now, and I can tell you guys this, that look, if you wanna be the top salesman in your company, you're gonna do it one or two ways, okay? Guys, I know it's lonely at the top, okay? If you're selling 40 or 50 cars, if you're crushing it, if you're on your A game, you don't have time to go sit down and, and have cool corner with everybody like it's high school. You know, cool corner when we were in school, everybody wanted to sit down and talk about everything. You don't have time for that, okay? You gotta get in, you gotta get your work done, you gotta kill it, and then you go home at the end of the day and you go home with your family. Guess what? You don't see top salesmen going out and having drinks with their customers, or going and having drinks with their salesmen, or going and having drinks with their, their, their friends. Those guys, they're loners. But I will share this with you, okay? There's two ways to act. If I'm the top salesman and I'm killing it, when they're having a lot party and everybody's moving the lot outside, is that top salesman out there with them? He better be. Let me tell you why. If that guy wants to be the GM and run the store, you lead by example. You're not too good for nothing. Guys, when I was a GM, every Monday morning we did a lot party. 500 cars, we moved every one of them. Who was the first person out, rain, sleet, or snow? Me. You know how many people missed that? Zero. They were all there with me. We laughed, joked, and played the entire time while we moved it. Our lot looked unbelievable. We didn't have a lot party. You know why? Everybody wanted to do it. We did it as a team together. That's a wasted expense as a GM. A lot, Porter. Your salesman will do it with you. You'll know your inventory better than ever. You'll find out problems with the cars, and then you corral and you have unity. And guess what? You take and that GM's not out there. What happens when the GM's not out there? You only got the new guys moving a lot, and then the top salesmen are waiting inside. Because I'm going to tell you, that's how stores are split apart, 
And that's why stores aren't making the money that they need today. Because it all starts at the top. Extreme ownership starts at the top. And I'm going to tell you this. When you give away the power that you have by making an excuse and blaming it on something, right? I see a lot of GMs and owners. You know what they do? They say, well, you know, man, I know it's September and the market's down a little bit right now. And I say, hey, how about you take ownership for a minute? How about, look, I'm the GM. I'm responsible. I'm in charge. And I'm going to tell you this. I've been down on the ground every day. I've been talking to every customer that came in the door. I've been on the telephone, right, up, up in my internet department, talking to, to customers and taking leads constantly. How many GMs are sitting in your internet BDC department right now on the phone talking to customers? Why not? I'm going to tell you, if you want to know what's going on in your store, that's the first place you start. Every day I lived like that. You know why? Because I'm not better than anyone. But I am the leader. And when you're the leader right now as a salesperson in your store, and you start showing people love, these guys around you that are hating on you, you can do one or two things. People are always going to hate on you. Show them love. Show them love. And then one day when they're working for you, they'll be grateful for you. They've seen where you come. They see where you come from. I see so many people right now that come out and they kill it and they do amazing. And you know what? People are like, oh man, that guy's so successful. He does great, man. Hey, tell me how you did it. You really want to know? That guy was a salesman. Everyone told him as he was working on training and be becoming, you know, like had his goals high and uh, how to go to the next level and build his family, uh, his income up and his financial uh, mindset. He wanted to grow it. And he's watching these training videos and guess what happens? Salesmen are like, man, this stuff's not going to work. Funny thing is, everyone didn't believe in top GMs in the company right now. Those are the guys that have a bigger fire in their belly than anyone around. So I'll share this with you. Whether you're a GM, if you are one, you need to look in the mirror and you say, hey, am I a first foot on the ground and the last foot off? Or literally, have I taken my title and have I taken advantage of it? Are you taking it away from your salesman, right? That they should be around a leader like yourself because you got that leader job more so they can become more developed? Or do you think a manager underneath you, right? Do you have one that's qualified to really take them to the level that you want them to be at? Go do it yourself. And I'm gonna tell you this, when the bottom line earnings are up 20%, 50%, 100%, you'll know why. Because of what you did with your sales staff, okay? If you're a manager right now, and you're working for a GM, or you're working for a store and an owner, and you understand your value, but you just feel like, man, I've been grinding, I've been doing everything I can, I'm trying to sell more cars. I'm gonna tell you this, dealerships don't sell cars, salesmen sell cars. The guy that's gonna run the dealership now, next is the guy that owns the salesman. You grab every single one of your salesmen, you kick cancer out, and guess what happens? You corral them, you love on them, you motivate them, you encourage them, and you train them on a daily basis. Guess what happens? Don't be surprised when you're the next GM in your store. And guess what? If your GM and your store or your company won't promote you, there'll be another one that would die to have you. Okay? And then third of all, if you're a salesman and you're out there and you're like, man, you know, I'm in this sales game, but I'm getting tired of it. Guys, I'm going to tell you this. Selling is awesome. It's awesome. It is unbelievably fulfilled. If you want to go to the stars and become a GM, you're going to have to be the best salesman out there. And then when you get into management and the way that you treat people right now based on the way that you're selling will be the way that you handle those people that you're still working with when you take your management job. Guys, if you don't love helping people, I'm sorry, but you're not going to work your way up. And when you do, you're just going to be another title. And guess what happens to people that become another title? Owners get smart enough and they'll replace you when you're not increasing their bottom line when they hear about another guy across town in the same market that's increasing his bottom line. So, I hope this helps you. If you guys want to become a GM and you want to become one fast, or if you're currently a one and you want to do better, guys, I'm going to tell you, stop managing and start leading. Because when you start leading your people and you live on the ground and you put the bull crap to the side, guess what? The guy that has the best sales team in today's market is the guy who's crushing it. All the stores around town. They have a lot of cars parked in front of them. You can have all the digital strategies you want, all the marketing campaigns going on, the best cars, the internet um, department. You can have all that. But if the salesman on the bottom line, all this money we're spending advertising to get these customers to come in, these people aren't fired up to go help them because they don't have a good leader. I'm going to tell you this. Someone around town is going to kill it. 
And then you're going to be at your store making excuses, blaming. You give the power away when you make excuses. Take extreme ownership. Own it when you do great. Own it when you do bad. And then guess what? Then you have the power to change it. And if you want to become a great GM and you're a salesman today, I'm going to tell you this. Keep that dream. Remember everything that I said during this video. The guys that own the sales team owns the store. Stores don't sell cars. Salesmen sell cars. It's easy to fix leads. It's easy to fix the internet department. It's hard to fix sales staffs. So be on the bottom floor with them. Be the Marine out there that knows what they're going through and pull them up. And then guess what? When everyone's in your store is making $10,000 a month, $15,000 a month, it's unbelievable. Everybody's so happy. They're so blessed. They're thankful for you. And they will bend over backwards for that company and turn over ends. But if you work at a store where one person at the top is making like a ton of money and then everyone else is on the bottom broke, that is a broken process. I'm going to tell you right now. You're not going to be in business and you won't make it for a couple more years. So I appreciate it, guys. I hope this helped. I want you guys to have a blessed day. Thank you.